Is the Ultimaker S5 the ultimate Ultimaker? We're about to find out. Hey, I'm David Gewertz, and welcome to ZDNet's DIY IT Discovery Series on 3D printing and desktop fabrication. Today, we're looking at the Ultimaker S5. And there is a lot to discuss. I actually have notes to make sure I stay on track and get you all the information that I think you're going to want to know about this really amazing printer. So let's start off with build size. This is much bigger than the Ultimaker 3. It's a 330 by 240 by 300 build size versus 215 by 215 by 200. And the Ultimaker 2, I'm sorry, the Ultimaker 3, which also has dual filament, would lose some of its build space. It would lose, it would go down to 197 by 215 by 200 when you use two nozzles. This, the Ultimaker S5, does not lose any build space when you're using both nozzles. So that's a big improvement. You can build some really big stuff. And I've done a couple of large build experiments that I'm gonna show you in a little while. One of the things that it does, which I actually forgot to bring over, but I'm gonna bring over now, is it has a, an end of filament sensor. So if you run out of filament, I'll give you a close-up shot on this in a bit, but if it runs out of filament, you can swap filament It'll hold, you just put in a new piece of filament and replace it, and it'll do just that for you. So I had this relatively large print, uh, which ran out of filament, and was starting it in this great gold, ran out of filament, and I wanted to get it finished, so I threw in a different filament. So that is a really nice benefit of the printer. Um, in fact, the th one of the things, I, I guess I would say my favorite feature of this machine is how easy it is to change filament. It is by far the easiest machine to change filament I have ever used. The Ultimaker 3 was a little difficult in changing filament. Yes, you had to get behind the machine, but then you had to kind of hold it and squish it and get the filament up and get it on the right channel and while you were pressing it in and it was it was a little bit of a contortion. This has a simple knob. The filament changes are instant, simple, Zero hassle. I love how this machine changes filament, and it is a, a favorite, favorite feature, and is making this one of my very favorite machines. So that's important. It's got an, um, an NFC sensor on the back for Ultimaker branded filament, so if you just don't want to have any hassle setting up your filament and putting it into Cura, you just drop it in, the NFC sensor will figure out which, what it is and, and put it into your system. I've rarely used the Cura, um, I'm sorry, I've rarely used the Ultimaker filament. Most of the filament I've used has been uh, either specialty filament, ColorFab provided us with a ton of filament for this project to do a, both the big prints you're gonna see today, as well as a series of additional big prints you'll be seeing over the coming weeks. Um, and I've used some random stuff I had sitting around and with the exception of one problem, I had not a single filament fail, I had a single build fail in the entire time using the printer. And that one problem was my fault. Basically, I put the, uh, the copper fill, which is copper infused filament, into the printer and didn't read the manual. Um, ColorFab recommends you change the flow rate from 100% to 108%. I didn't do that on my first test piece, so it kind of gunked up. Um, actually, it, it, str it stringied up. Once I pulled out um, the, the, the test piece and went back and read ColorFab's instructions, I changed the flow rate. And from then, I've been able to print inc this incredible piece, which is the uh, Star Trek Discovery, which I haven't put together yet, and I'll be doing that later. But as you can see, it's just an incredible piece. And this is all done with copper fill with not a single error in the entire print. And it went through and it did not fail, which is just astonishing for something this big and this weird. So let's see what else I have on here I wanna tell you. Um, oh, it's got a full color display, unlike the previous one, which was blue and black. The display is great, except there's a couple of things that are kind of weird. Like there's white on light gray text in some of the menu items. And for a color display, which has beautiful full color, 
why they have some buttons that are white on light gray, which you can't really see from this height. So you got to kind of lean down and kind of stare at it. I don't know. I'm hoping in a future software update they fix that because that's a, that's a bit of a design fail, but it's a it's a nit. It's a tiny nit on everything else in this machine. That's really cool. Um, the the machine does smart bed leveling, so it doesn't just test on a couple corners. It, it tests on like 12 spots. The bed comes up, and the um, the print head tests in a variety of places, which allows the printer to really get in and tram the bed just right, so it knows exactly where things are and I gotta tell you, I mean, I printed a large Mount Hood and I, it was perfectly flat. And I printed a, num a number of other things that were just perfect. No peeling, no twisting, just perfect. And then of course I printed the, the, the Discovery vertical and it, it, it came out smooth. So um, the bed leveling is, is really cool. Um, there are multiple extruders and there are also multiple extruder types. So not only can you switch extruders like this one, which is meant for dissolvable filament, but you can also get different nozzle sizes in the extruder. And, and instead of having to go in there and change the nozzle, you just pop the extruder out, put in a different type. So if you want one, um, one nozzle to be spewing out at like 0.4 and you want another nozzle to be extruding at 0.8, you can make those changes, which is, is pretty sweet. Before I was brave enough to do the really big projects, I decided to do a number of test projects. I printed a hook for my wife's sewing room that would allow her to hang clothes off of the hook. I printed another hook that just was a single clothes hanging thing. I printed a thing that fit into a door when we bought, a ho bought the house. There was a hole in a door, so I filled that with a flat piece that has some bracketry inside to hold it. Um, I printed a bunch of small things and I printed a whole pile of tests. You know, I printed the, the test Yoda, the printed the test cubes, that kind of stuff. And, and all of them, with the exception of that one that I, I set the settings wrong for, printed perfectly. So then I was brave enough to begin trying the big things. But I was a little bit nervous about what it would take to detach the print off of the glass bed when I was printing like a 300 by 300 flat piece that I didn't want to damage taking it off the bed. So I got in touch with the folks at Ultimaker and I spoke to one of their support guys who told me that I should use basically glue stick and print on top of the glue stick. And I'm like, you know, I've had problems with that. It's, it's either not worked or been difficult to remove or whatever. And he's like, okay, all right, print it on glue stick, let it print and don't try removing it until after the printer cools. And that's the trick. Apparently, if you try removing it really quickly, it's really problematic. But if you wait, if you, if you print it and you're patient, and then you just take the thing off, it just comes right off. It's beautiful. Um, my other question was, how do I clean off the glue stick each time? I'm going to have to take a chisel. Well, my previous methods was taking a chisel and trying to get it off or using alcohol and then scrubbing it and scraping it. And, no, no. Easy. Take a paper towel wet with the machine off or, or a quiescent, take a paper towel, wet the paper towel, put it down on the printer, wait 15 to 20 minutes, come back, rub the damp paper towel on the printer bed, you're done. That's it. It's clean, it's easy, it's fast. Printing on this thing with bed adhesion, with glue stick, as long as you follow a couple of simple best practices, is really nice, surprisingly nice. I just really enjoyed it. And again, I've had no problems with it. The, the printer has doors, these glass doors, which helps manage the heat, which is really nice. And I like that as well. My first big build was a Mount Hood sculpture, which is based on a scan of the terrain of Mount Hood and then is, is converted into an STL file, which I was then able to download from Thingiverse and print. I live in Oregon, so printing a Mount Hood was really nice. I'm actually about 60 miles away and when it's clear, I can actually see Mount Hood from here, which is really neat. So, but it's, it's big, it takes up most of the, uh, of the bed surface. And like I said before, I was a little bit nervous about removing it. It printed perfectly and I used the graduated print settings, which meant that it, instead of taking days, it took just overnight to print. And again, a, a perfectly clean print. So cool that we decided we were going to take it and hang it on the wall. We have a perfect spot in our entryway to do that so I drilled a hole in it 
and we hung it up. So this is the entry area to the house, and my wife and I thought that putting Mount Hood up on the wall in a spot that, that's just perfect for it would give us a sort of eagle's eye perspective. All we need is one nail. Now it's level. No other part of the house is level, but at least it's level. How cool is that? The second really large project I wanted to print was the USS Discovery from Star Trek. And I showed you that briefly before, but it is a beautiful print. And I printed it in two passes. It actually would have fit side by side on the build plate, but I'm really glad I printed it in two passes because what happened was this, this piece printed perfectly all the way up to the top. And then as the build plate cooled, this is not, this is not level. In other words, this, this piece, the saucer section, is much heavier. So as the plate cooled, the adhesion began to give up and then just toppled over. That was it, just toppled over. But if I had printed both of them, they would have both toppled over and it's possible it would have broken, but this didn't. It, it fell down and it's in perfectly good condition. So very cool. And if you think about it, if you look at this, I mean, this is, this is a big print. Um, together, these things are over 20 inches long. And I printed this one vertically. This is just about the maximum build height that you can get out of the printer. This is a little bit smaller, but a little bit more complex. But together, they were beautiful prints out of copper fill. They're kind of heavy because it's actually copper. And I'm gonna do some finishing with it and turn it into something, I hope, something very cool, which I will show you at a future time. So overall, is this printer worth it? It's a $6,000 printer, which is substantially more expensive than the Ultimaker 3 and way more expensive than hobbyist machines. Is it worth the $6,000? And really the answer to that depends on what you're gonna do with it and what your budget is. If you're doing commercial work, it is absolutely worth it. It is probably the best 3D printer I have ever used. And I love the, the little um, Lowell's Bot machines. I like my CR10. I really like the, the Ultimaker 3. But this thing has a huge build area, prints the huge build area, seems to print huge builds with zero problems. At least I haven't had any problems yet. Um, is easy for loading filament has multiple filaments, doesn't lose any build area when you're printing multiple filaments. It's, it's really a nice machine. So I have to say that this is, this is a pretty wonderful machine. And you know, if you are doing jigs or manufacturing pieces or prototypes, or you're doing any kind of commercial activity, then the $6,000 is well worth it in terms of, of not wasting your time having to do redos, rebuilds. It actually comes out after you set it in there and it prints and it works. It just seems to work. I've been working with this now for about two and a half months. I've done 10, 12 smaller prints and three, if you count these as two, I've done three really large prints and it's been rock solid. Um, I will be doing more, as I said, but I'm incredibly impressed with this machine. And with that, my name is David Gewertz for ZDNet's DIY IT Discovery Series on 3D printing and desktop fabrication. Go ahead and punch the like or subscribe button if you like this, and build, print, design, make something cool.